Hello class, I'd like to solve problem 9 from the 6-2 uh, homework set. So it looks like we have data that um, will represent the number of days a student is absent, we'll call that X, and the final exam score, we'll call that Y, uh, from students in a large university. Oops. Uh, so it says complete parts A through E. So the first thing we need to do is come up with a regression equation. Uh, so let's look at our data. Here's our data. So looks like a student with zero absences has an exam score of 88.7. One absence would be 87.4 and so on. So it looks like the more absences, the lower the score. That kind of makes sense. I open this up in StatCrunch and wait for it to load. Here's my data. So let's do stat regression, simple linear. Uh, my X were the number of absences, Y was the final exam score, and I think that's all I need for now. Um, I press compute, and here we go. So my regression equation uh, looks like my slope is this negative 2.823. So let's go back, and I put in my slope here. And it says go three decimal places. And now, let's see here. My y-intercept looks something like this. And again, I have to go three decimal places, so I went too far. So let's call this 643, 644. I'm going to round the three up. And we check our answer. And we're looking good. Okay, so interpret the slope and the y-intercept if appropriate. So it looks like for every absence, right, if x is the number of absences and y is your score, every time you're absent, it looks like your score goes down by 2.823 points, right? So for every additional absence, the student's final exam drops, um, let's see, 2.823. And if you think about it, a student that had no absences or zero, right? If I put in a zero for X, zero absences, zero times negative 2.823 is still zero. So you'd be left with a score of 88.644, right? So for every additional absence, the score is going to drop by this 2.823. That's the slope. The final exam score for someone who misses zero classes, right? I'd put in a zero for X. I'd be left with the 88.644. Check answer. Looks good. Next, can you predict the final exam score for a student who misses five class periods? So if we take out our calculator and we use the equation, right, let me type this up. You see what I did here? Right? I just took our equation and I replaced the X with five classes. Right? So if I said how many uh, what's the score for someone who misses 10 classes? I put in a 10 here, or three classes, I put in a three here. But the question does ask five classes, so I place a five in for X, I press enter. So it looks like somebody with that score, uh, with someone who missed five classes would receive a 74 point, what was the decimal place? We'll call it five three. Let's check our answer. Looks good. Compute the residual. All right, we can do that in StatCrunch. Um, let's open that up. If I go back to Options, Edit, if you look down here uh, where it says Save the Residuals, I can click Residuals, press Compute, and notice I have a new column here. It says Residuals. So someone that had five absences the residual will be 0.548, right? It'd be this value here, 5484, 5484. Whoops. So let's put that in. And it did say uh, two decimal places, so let's call that 55.55. Five, five. And I just want to double check to make sure I did that okay. All right, five classes. Oh, I was, in, I was on the wrong line. Sorry about that. Five classes was negative 0.33, right? Negative 0.33.
So there they double check. Okay, let's try that now. And we check our answer. Okay, well done. And it says, is the final exam score above or below? So we're going to say below, right? So the negative residual tells us that we're below the, the, the average. And we can look at our scores in StatCrunch. And, right, so uh, we have 74.2, right? That is below um, what we see here, below the 74.53. How far below? Uh, 0.33, okay? And then it says draw the least squares regression line. So again, we can go back to StatCrunch and you notice how I just press the arrow to go back and forth. Right, so you see the regression line, here it is. So it looks like it falls from left to right. Uh, the first score is somewhere above 85. And let's see what we have for choices here. So this is no good. Looks like this would be our answer, right? This is the straight line that goes through most of the points. And we get a fantastic. I think that's it for this question. Question number nine. Nope, sorry, there's a party. Would it be reasonable to use the least square regression line to predict the score for a student who missed 15 periods? Well, the answer is no, because our observed data really only goes out to 10 absences. Um, so anything outside of our observed data would be considered extrapolation. Um, so the further you get away from known data, the less reliable your, your answer is. Uh, so I'm going to say no, because 15 absences is outside the scope of the model. Check answer. Done. I hope that helps. Uh, thank you for watching.